Welcome to part two of the special three-part series featuring the Elizabeth River Project's Ryan Resilience Lab. Part one, we learned about green features like green walls, rain gardens, electric vehicle charging stations, and more. If you haven't seen part one, check it out at the link below. But for now, let's jump back into the tour with Victoria Dunch, the Ryan Resilience Research Coordinator. And so here, the next thing I want to point out is actually what we're standing on. Yeah. So these are called, do you know what they're called? Permeable pavers? You got it, yeah! Yes. Yeah! And really, what's making it permeable pavers is that you've got two to three feet of different sized gravel below our feet. So again, this whole site is just like a giant sponge, mm -hmm. soaking up water when we have these really big rain events. Yeah. Um, and then it just lets that water soak back down into the ground ever so slowly. Yeah. And so permeable pavers come in different shapes and sizes. Okay. These are designed for pedestrian use, okay. just for people to walk on. Right. Those are designed oh, for cars. Those are permeable too. Those are permeable cars. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't yeah. realize that. So you can see they're a little bit different. Oh, they're cool. designed a little bit different. They are designed to bear the weight and torque of a car a little bit more. So yeah, permeable pavers come in different shapes and sizes. And I think that's important for folks to know just yeah. that, you know, they have different purposes. So now we're coming underneath the building. So we're right underneath the lab. Yeah. This is wild. So down here, we typically talk about wet versus dry flood proofing. I mean, how do I keep water out of a space, right? Like, okay. I, I don't want my space flooded. So if we knew that a big flood was gonna be coming through here, yeah. like in a day or so, we would go get this other bracket. Then there's like these long metal logs. Basically just slide it in. There's like four or five of them. So you just kind of stack them in one on top of the other and basically make a metal wall that keeps water from going into our elevator room. Yeah. So yeah, that is the one example that we have of dry flood proofing here. But okay. most of what we're modeling at the Ryan Resilience Lab is wet flood proofing. Right. But for the most part, we're just recognizing that the water is gonna come. So how do we just build and plan for that in the first place rather right. than constantly fighting it? The building is raised 10 feet off the ground okay. so that water can just move right through this space. So it is designed for flooding, okay. right? And then the water would hit this wall and it would push and push and destabilize the building right. unless you give it some pressure relief. Okay. So this is where flood vents come into play. So we have an example of one here. Um, and flood vents allow water to just move right into a space. So this is a filtration room. It is designed to flood. It is okay. okay. There is a flood vent on the other side of the space. So again, water can just move through. You can actually get a reduction on your homeowner's insurance yeah. um, by installing things like these in your crawl spaces and basements because it helps to manage what would otherwise be the destabilization of your structure during a flood. And then, yeah, all these beautiful plants here. This is a staging area for native plants for our restoration team. So all of these beautiful marsh grasses are destined to go out to a shoreline somewhere in the Hampton Roads area to make our water cleaner. They're the ones that filter our water. They stabilize our structure. Yeah. They are just beautiful, are beautiful, beautiful soft. marsh grass. This place is amazing. What a great place to work. It is. And <laughs> me personally, that's one of my favorite things about working here is to see that people that have lived here their whole lives, they remember 50 years ago when the river was considered dead, right? There was an urban legend that you'd need six shots if you fell in because really? of how contaminated the water was. Yeah. Whoa. There were competitions for like the most cancerous fish that people could pull really? out. It was really sad. So now because of people coming together, because of all of the work that's been done to clean up the Elizabeth River, to pull contamination out of the bottom, to put living shorelines back, the river's so much healthier, right? Yeah. We see dolphins in every branch of the river. We see seahorses, river otters. The water's just so much cleaner than it used to be. And Dude. that is a conservation success story that yeah. we don't get very many of these days, right? So I think that's one of the reasons why people are just so in love with this river because they have this tangible example in their own backyard right. of something that turned around, right? And it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a message of hope, so. It's pretty Do cool. It. Next, we're yeah. going to talk about these cisterns. 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 Okay. So these are large containers yeah. that hold 5,000 gallons of water each. 5,000 gallons of water. Yeah. And so what they do is collect all of the water that hits our roof. So water filters through the green roof. Then it comes down through these pipes and actually goes through this black drum you might be able to see right here. Okay, yes. It gets it. filtered for sediments through there. Okay. And then the water goes into these two containers. So what do you use a lot of water for in your house that doesn't need to be drinkable? 
them toilets. Them toilets, them toilets. yeah. <laughs> and did you know that pretty much in every single home, in every single business, in every single school, unless they've done something to retrofit, we're all flushing our toilets with potable drinking water. That water was pulled out of the aquifer. It went through all the loops to get treated to be drinkable. And then we're using it to wash waste down toilets. Um, I know. <laughs> That's really frustrating, actually. It, it is. It kind of sucks. <laughs> so rather than do that, we are just capturing all the water from our roof and we're able to save a lot of water by doing that cool so it's something that can be replicated even lady fern native plants just yeah. a few blocks up from down here the road, right? just yeah. down the road she's right over here she's got cisterns that she uses to water nice. her business a, nice. a, a, you know native plant nursery human beings have been collecting and storing water for thousands and thousands yeah. of years right yeah. and storing them in containers so yeah. like it's really not that novel of a of an idea it just requires a little bit of rethinking how yeah. we do things typically fighting the programming of not doing it to get back to this act of doing this exactly right? yeah. exactly and i think this is also why it's so important to have like engineers and architects mm. and young people come see these sorts of things yep. because if we don't know we don't do different right so here we're coming into our learning park okay. so this learning is a, park. the learning park is pause heron Oh, so cool. And this is what happens when yeah. you come to the learning park. You may see all sorts of wildlife. This is a great place for birding, honestly. Yeah. yeah, because of the living shoreline now, we see so many different species. Osprey, pelicans, herons, egrets. I swear we saw river otters in That's here exciting. last year. That's exciting. Some muskrat. Oh my God, so yeah. many different species. But yeah, this learning park is open to the public say, here. Say that one more time. Open to the public please come. Whenever we're here and the gates are open, we yeah. welcome folks to come on through. We're going to get our boardwalk installed soon and that's going to be so pretty. You're going to be able yeah. to see down through it yeah. and experience every different stage of the ecosystem. Walk from the riparian that's habitat cool. to the high marsh, <laughs> to the low marsh, to the oyster reef, to really? the river. Yeah. And then all circle oh, back wow. around. So it'll be very cool. Um, we have a public kayak launch that's super nice and it's made out of another type of permeable pathway now okay. right it's not just permeable pavers they just not yeah. everything needs to be cement and asphalt right right um those are non-permeable surfaces that don't let water soak down into the ground and making cement also creates a lot of carbon dioxide emissions so okay. um <laughs> permeable pathways are great like this clamshell pathway for example so you can walk right down to the water oh, wow. um, and yeah you can see just how well the buffer is doing here how well the living shoreline all of the different grasses they're coming in um, we had folks pulling up on kayaks yesterday a big group of kids so 